All right, let's, uh, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 21. The burden of the desert of the sea, as whirlwind, whirlwinds in the south pass through, so it cometh from the desert, from a terrible land. A grievous vision is declared unto me. The treacherous dealer dealeth treacherously, and the spoiler spoileth. Go up, O Elam, besiege O Med uh, Media. All the signs thereof have I made to cease. Therefore are my loins filled with pain. Pangs have taken hold upon me as the pangs of a woman that travaileth. You know, it's talking about the pains of a woman in childbirth here. I was bowed down at the hearing of it. I was dismayed at the seeing of it. My heart panteth. Fearfulness affrighted me. The night of my pleasure hath he turned into fear unto me. Prepare the table. Watch in the watchtower. Eat. Drink. Arise, ye princes, and anoint the shield. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go, set a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. Now, what was a watchman? You know, a watchman somebody that was on the wall of the city that would look for an enemy army approaching and, you know, warn the city so that everybody could prepare for war. A watchman's job was very, very important. During World War II, if somebody was on guard duty and they fell asleep, uh, oftentimes they would get, well, they'd be executed. The Roman army, if you got caught sleeping on guard duty, it was an automatic execution. They killed you, period. And they would do it in front of everybody. Oh yeah, you want to fall asleep on guard duty? This is what happens. And they would kill you. So, you know, you made sure that you did not fall asleep on guard duty. It was a very, very important thing. You know, maybe most of the time nothing would happen, but if, if you know, if you needed to warn everybody, they took it very seriously. A watchman's job was very important, uh, even though most of the time nothing would happen, but when it did... They had to be ready. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go, set a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. And he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, a chariot of asses and a chariot of camels, and he hearkened diligently with much heed. And he cried, A lion, my Lord, I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my ward whole nights. And behold, here cometh a chariot, a chariot of men, with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And all the graven images of her gods he hath broken unto the ground. Now, why do they say Babylon is fallen, is fallen? Like I've mentioned before, when I went to uh, Palm Beach College, Palm Beach State College, it was Palm Beach Junior College back in the day, uh, I always learned that when a teacher repeated something more than once, write it down, learn it, memorize it, because it's going to be on the test. And I think that's what the Lord here is doing. This is going to be on the test, people. Babylon has fallen, is fallen. Babylon fell physically. It was destroyed by the Medes and the Persians, never to be rebuilt. And I did a Bible study on that. But why is fallen, is fallen? Well, it fell once physically. The next time, it's going to fall spiritually. You see, when the Bible in Revelation talks about mystery, 
Babylon the Great, it's talking about the spiritual aspect of Babylon. Let's take a look. In Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 8, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her, take balm for her pain. If so, be she may be healed. So the city of Babylon was destroyed by the Medes and the Persians. Uh, King, well, Hussein tried to rebuild Babylon, but he was deposed from power by the United States government. So, in Revelation 18.2, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Revelation 14.8, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And we're talking about a spiritual fornication, right? All right, let's go back. Uh, Isaiah 21, verse 9. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven images of her gods, gods, plural, he hath broken unto the ground. O my threshing and the corn of my floor, which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you. The burden of Duma, he called me, he called to me out of Seir. Now, Seir was the... Um, land of Esau, Idumea. He called to me out of Seir, watchman that of the night. Watchman, what of the night? The watchman said, The morning cometh, and also the night. If ye will inquire, inquire ye, return, come. The burden upon Arabia. In the forest in Arabia shall ye lodge, O ye traveling com companies of Dedanim, the inhabitants of the land of Tema brought water to him that was thirsty. They prevented with their bread him that fled. For they fled from the swords which the drawn sword, and from the bent bow, and from the grievousness of war. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Within a year, according to the years of a hireling, and all the glory of Kedar shall fall. I'm sorry, shall fail. And all the glory of Kedar shall fail. And the residue of the number of archers, the mighty men of the children of Kedar, shall be diminished. For the Lord of God, for the Lord God of Israel hath spoken it. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.